point, as a consequence of my decision to do the taxi hand signs, sorry, um, was that I had approached my domestic worker and I asked her to please do a taxi hand sign for me that I could carve out of wood. I'd already begin, began painting little hand signs that I'd seen on the street, um, but I wanted to carve this taxi hand sign out of wood. And Sophie did a taxi hand sign for me, and I thought, I said to her, you know, are you sure that's a taxi hand sign? And she said, definitely, she takes taxis uh, to town every day using that hand sign. So I began carving, and um, I soon discovered through two bricklayers and Sophie's children that that definitely wasn't the taxi hand sign to use. That was the taxi hand sign that she gave me. This was the one I knew. But anyway, I was halfway through um, <laughs> the taxi hand sign, halfway through carving this thing out of a big block of wood. So I thought, now what am I going to do? Because artists are very imaginative. We really ha we can't waste our time for three months cost, uh, doing something. So that night, very miserable, I saw um, in a newspaper picture of Jacob Zuma coming out of court and doing this sign which was for them the encant where we seize we sign of power. And I thought, wow, you know, this is what, where I can go. And it actually started an exhibition which I had at the end of last year called Jacob's Ladder, um, which was about how we judge people. And I had um, several sculptures, which you can see over there, with different politicians who we like to put on a pedestal and knock off this, the pedestal. And I'm not going to tell you about that exhibition now, but just to show you what happens sometimes with taxi hand signs. Millions of commuters all over South Africa use taxi hand signs as a way of indicating where they're going. And they indicate this to 15,000 taxi drivers every day. I became aware of taxi hand signs on Louis Botha Avenue, but soon noticed that they were doing these taxi hand signs all over the place. And I was fascinated, I was curious, and I was in awe of such an obviously successful and intrinsically South African gestures that were being done and that they actually existed. I started doing little paintings, as I told you, and I went to speak to a taxi driver. That was the first person that I made contact with. And one of the imp important things for me was to actually treat this as one of my um, normal social arts projects. Uh, social interventionist art is what I call most of the way that I explore my work. And I wanted to explore the significance of taxi hand signs as silent, brief, functional, and specific gestures. And I asked myself why and by whom these gestures were established, how they were used, communicated, learnt, and narrated. And my art is always about looking beyond um, just what you see and try, and the exploration that I do and the research that I do is very much part of it because th the experiences of meeting people are always so interesting and amazing. And um, first of all, I want to tell you why I chose colored gloves. And the reason that they were, the paintings were colored gloves was because I didn't want to discriminate against anybody. So I used gloves that are not builder's gloves or very fancy ladies' gloves. I just used gloves that everybody could own and uh, associate themselves with. And the research... Um, was first to get the destinations, because I found there was no documentation on taxi hand signs at all, hardly any information on taxis as such. And um, then to investigate through a, a broader and deeper research strategy. And uh, the first, this taxi driver that I told you about, I met him at Sandton City in one of the cafes there. And after two or three meetings, I realized that I wasn't going to get anything from the taxi driver. I needed to go and speak to taxi associations. But the taxi driver was nervous to introduce me, this Umlungu, Gogo Umlungu lady, to these big bosses. So I had to be brave, and I phoned up a few taxi association people, and I met the most amazing people on my journey. 
Um, I went to the Greater Johannesburg Regional Taxi Council. I met the dispute manager for all the taxis who handles um, Top Six and De Jolta and all these uh, rebel taxis as well as the government um, taxi people. And then I also asked myself, do blind people take taxis? And I started develop developing shapes which coded for taxi hand signs for blind people. And one of the main reasons I did that was that long ago I saw um, books that blind people had been given with illustrations, but the illustrations were um, outlines. So that's fine for a, a hand sign like this, but or for a, an object like that, but the minute there are two or three objects, it becomes confusing. So I chose to do shapes that coded for taxi hand signs. And then my first little book with taxi hand signs and um, the paintings was given to the libraries as a way of sort of documenting it. Now these were the first um, shapes, there's two pages of them. Um, so you can see that they're very simple. The dot represents the wrist and um, let me show you the triangle represents the palm of the hand and the dot of the wrist always stays there. So whichever way the hand moves, the blind person always knows that the position of the hand before they even look at the, at the fingers. Um, so this also was a book, I produced a book on the 30th of uh, September this year, and it had tactile signs, they're not braille, they're shapes that are made of raised dots, and um, I've got the little book here if you, if you want to see it. And I want to explain to you how simple it is for blind people to recognize these shapes because from the very beginning they completely understood what I was doing. And some of the, the reasons I think is that blind people are incredibly imaginative and they dig very deep into their imaginings and they recognize things that we often are confused about. Um, one, this sign over there with the, three, the four dots, just imagine, put up your left hand I'll show you how I explained this to Obert McGoovey, who is a, an educationist who's been blind since birth. Take the other hand and put your fingers out like that. And now touch your four fingers on the palm of your hand. This was a hand sign that goes in that direction with the four fingers. And I was trying to explain to the blind person that when you close your eyes and you feel your, the tips of your fingers, those are the four dots. Now, if I'm explaining to sighted people it's different, then I just say to you, put a bit of fing uh, paint on your fingers and, and you'll see the four dots. But blind people don't have that uh, luxury. So um, it's actually quite easy. Um, the other thing that I was doing was I was looking at the meanings behind the signs as well. So when you start talking to people, you ask them the story, the stories that go behind them. And this is a particularly inter interesting story. Um, this hand sign over here is like this and that, okay? And the story behind this is that the chief of Mahibastat um, about three or four years ago was murdered. And this, um, the, his body parts, he was all cut up and they cut off his testicles. So this is the sign. So I, just like you, I thought, wow, you know, this is funny. But after talking to the person that I was speaking to, and I saw his reaction, and it was like horror. And he explained to me that the people are, who respect the chief and liked him are very insulted that people are doing this hand sign. The only trouble is there's no documentation, there's no little book. So people who want to know how to get from Hammerskroll to Mohibistad, just say to somebody, excuse me, how do you do this hand sign? And um, they just say this. So you use it. So many, many people are using it, but it's causing some of these um, political uh, problems. So um, this book is also very interesting because the book for the blind has come out before the little booklet for sighted people, which is coming out in January, together with the national stamp for 2010. So I won this competition um, to... <laughs> oh, 
Thank you. Um, for the taxi hand signs to be on the stamps. But the most exciting thing about all of this is that the blind signs are going to be on the stamp as well in a process called thermography. And thermography, they just take plastic and they mix it with sand. And then it's sort of kind of raised off the stamp. But um, they also said to me at the post office that I could go and choose the sand from anywhere that I wanted to, to choose it. So um, I've chosen to go to a little blind and disabled school in, called Philadelphia in Pretoria, and we're going to go and dig up the sand there, and Philadelphia will go all over the world. Yeah. So I'm just going to take you through, through some of the stamps. You can see uh, Imdini to Highgate, um, Gauteng to Johannesburg, And this is local, but then this is also local. No, this is very local, so it could be, could be used, say, like in Pretoria or Joburg or, or anywhere. Cape Town, T-Junction, Tembisa to Sabenza, sign that goes behind. And then this is one of the uh, second envelopes. The other one was also an envelope that's uh, going to come out with the canceller. And this is Orange Farm. Orange Farm. And one, through my research, I've discovered that deaf people also use this. This is an orange for deaf people. Um, so th also deaf people say orange oh. farm, like that. So maybe if I put a line underneath my little... Um, sign, then it would be able to be read by both deaf and blind people. And that's something I'm working with a brilliant young deaf girl and she's going to, we're going to do something like a dictionary together where we tie in the, the taxi hand signs as a language, which I don't think it is yet, but it's, it's getting there. And then this is just to show you how, how our work, artists, how artists work to do the cartoons. The cartoons in the little book, I'm going to have lots of little fun cartoons that are also not um, people who can be recognized by any race, color, or creed. Uh, dip sluit, so some signs are site-specific or they describe a dip. And in fact, in Durban, when they do this, they say it's waves, the sea, we're going to the sea. So sometimes these signs are used in different places and mean different things. And you can see how easy it is for the blind people to, to read that because they can feel that curved shape, so it's really simple. So there's the little taxi book. It's a tiny little book. I'll show it to you afterwards if you want to see it. And um, just to end, Molefetele, my neighbor, who also gave me my other African name, Matabo, um, called the taxi hand signs um, one of the 12th languages, so part of one of the 12th languages. So he said South Africa has 11 official languages, but in reality there are 12. The 12th language is sign language. Part of this language is a rapidly evolving signals developed by millions of South Africans across townships and cities, the languages of commuters. As the taxi routes expand, the taxi hands co and, um, continuously develop as a logical visual language. Just to end now by saying that as part of my art, I want this to become a dialogical, a conversational event with taxi drivers, policemen, ordinary commuters, and so that at the end of my project, I will have a forum whereby people will be sitting here like you are and having discussions about um, taxis and taxi hand signs. Thank you very much.